Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome to yet another unboxing and review video. Today we're looking at the Midland Compound 440 locomotive as you can see there. Uh, and it's also known as the Midland Railway 1000 class. And uh, this loco was originally designed by Samuel Johnson and first built in 1902 for passenger work. Then Richard Dealey took over and further developed the locomotives uh, before they were rebuilt um, substantially by Henry Fowler. The class was actually very successful and when the LMS was formed the locos were actually chosen um, as the standard LMS Express locomotive which is quite interesting and as a result of that 240 of them were built in total and most of which survived into the BR era. However, there is only one preserved, um, I think, I'm not entirely sure, but I think there is only one, and that's number 1000, which is this one. And that's special because today um, is the 1000 subscriber special, um, which is why I've saved this logo for today. And uh, it's, it's not, you know, I know a thousand isn't a, a huge milestone uh, for most people, but to be honest, for me, that's absolutely incredible. And I'm just so grateful to all of you guys who have subscribed. So if you're one who's subscribed, thank you very much. Um, it does mean an awful lot. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do, because um, it feels great to get these milestones, which is really wonderful. Uh, but still, uh, so yeah, number 1000, I thought that would be a good one to do today. Uh, so let's take a look at the box before we get her open, which I'm dying to do. Uh, this is a railroad model, as you can see, and it's also DCC ready, um, which is pretty standard uh, now for models. Uh, on the end of the box, you've got R3063 LMS Compound 440, and it did take me uh, quite a while to find one of these, uh, but I managed to get one in the end for about £55, um, which is very good. Uh, so yeah, let's get this box open then. There we go, and uh, Hornby did used to make an old version of this loco, um, which was tender driven, and this is basically the same as it, except it's loco driven, so uh, I'll show you the other one later anyway. So let's see what else we've got here. Um, first of all, we've got uh, an insulating sleeve for the DCC uh, chip, if you want to fit it. I find these really much too big, to be honest, so I tend to just use a little bit of heat shrink uh, just to insulate them. Um, which is better. Uh, you've also got this uh, operating and maintenance instructions which is the same for the compound, county, hunt and schools class. Um, but I'll show it to you anyway very very quickly. There you go. It's very brief. Um, it's not got a lot there to be honest. And uh, yep. So that's the instructions. Let's lift this flap then and see what's underneath. I think we know but just in case we're not sure. There we go, there's the loco, gorgeous isn't she, and I love 440s as you know, uh, so we'll look at her in a second. First we've got this little detail pack, uh, which is barely a detail pack, it's in fact just a couple of uh, vacuum pipes, um, which you can take out of there and stick on the loco if you'd like to, uh, but I tend not to do that, um, because as you probably know I don't trust myself. <laughs> Lack of trust. I'm not very uh, delicate with things like that. Anyway, let's give this a try and of getting it out. Now, this is not the block of ice packaging, which seems like a luxury right now. Um, so I've got to try and grab her out of there somehow um, from the back, which does have holes in it. Uh, but still, with the loco being connected permanently to the tender, um, that isn't easy. So anyway, let's just try and coax this out of here. There we go. The tender came out very easily. <laughs> And as you can see, it's not very happy about coming out the box. But there we go, a lovely um, 440 and first impressions. Um, it's very simple, there's not a terrible amount of detail on there, but it's also very, very smart looking. Uh, but for a better look, I'll take her up onto the background for you and uh, give you a little review of her. All right, so there she is then. Hopefully you can see her a little bit better there. And despite not being particularly detailed, um, as I'm sure you can tell, she's absolutely beautiful looking. Um, having said that, there is still quite, you know, there is a fair bit of detail. Um, there is this sort of plastic work on the side here. Uh, I'm not sure what it is, uh, but it is only on the left side. Uh, but again, that's quite a nice separately fitted part there. And you've also got this, well, I presume it's the reversing rod, um, which is a bit strange looking. I don't think it's metal. It is certainly metallic, but it isn't metal. I think it is plastic. Uh, but that's not to say the quality of the model uh, is bad, because I find that the build quality of this model especially is pretty good. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other separately fitted parts. You've got the safety valves on the top there, which sadly are plastic, uh, but the whistle to the right of those um, does appear to be metal, which is quite interesting too. 
Uh, the paint job's pretty nice as well, as you can see. Um, it's in quite a nice maroon livery um, with the yellow trim, which goes all along the bottom of the locomotive, as you can see there, and it goes over the wheel arches too. And it's all been quite nicely applied, but you'll find there isn't quite as much of this um, yellow trim um, as there is on the older um, Railways model, which was tender-driven. For example, you haven't got any lining on the windows there, uh, but they are glazed, which is quite nice. You haven't got any of the yellow on the steam chests either, which is a bit of a shame. And there's none going over the boiler either, uh, which does make the loco look a lot simpler, I think. Uh, but it's not necessarily any the worse for it, and it still does look very smart. Around the front, you have got the number 1000 on the front of the smoke box door, alongside uh, a handrail, uh, which does look pretty good. Uh, I will say uh, that is quite nicely detailed. And the model itself does have a fair few rivets on it, especially on the front buffer beam and on the roof of the cab. Let's just give you a quick look inside the cab. Uh, there is cab detail, as you can see, but it isn't painted, as is the norm with the railroad range. Uh, but the old version of this did have a painted cab, uh, which is a key difference between them. But, you know, you can't complain because I don't think any railroad models do have it. So generally, the Loco is pretty attractive, as you can see. It does look like a Midland compound, and it's got some real character. Um, it does lack in a little bit of detail, but that is quite common with the railroad range. And I don't think it sticks out as being a particularly badly detailed Loco. Let's move on to the tender. And as you can see, um, it is very elegant once again. The LMS logo on the side has been very neatly applied. And the tender especially does have quite nice paintwork. Um, you know, it has got the yellow trim and such, but the undercarriage is also nicely painted in red and black as well. The coal load on this, as with most locos, which originated as tender drive examples, um, does have um, a quite a tall coal load, uh, which originally, of course, would have been to accommodate the Ringfield motor. Uh, but now it's a little bit unnecessary, uh, but the coal load is pretty nice looking as you can see. It's not very glossy, but it is quite large scale as most railroad coal is. Uh, but the tender does have plenty of rivets and it's painted particularly nicely as you can see there. So all in all it's a very elegant locomotive with a fair amount of detail on her, making her quite a good value locomotive. I paid about £55 for this as I say and I don't think that was too bad a deal at all. Uh, so let's take her down onto the railway then and see how she runs. Okay, so she's sitting on the railway looking absolutely beautiful, really she is, and uh, I'm going to give her a performance test in just a moment after I've shown you what else is going to be running. First of all, she's going to be pulling a rake of four LMS coaches, and uh, I suppose um, she might have been able to pull a bit more than four coaches in real life, almost certainly. Uh, but I think that's quite a nice little rate today. On the other line, I've put out the other um, Midland Compound Loco. This is the older Hornby Tender Driven one that I was talking to you about. And uh, if we just bring her forward a little bit, uh, you can see some differences here. Um, first of all, the livery on the older version is a lot richer. It's a lot deeper red um, than on the modern one. Um, which does, you know, make it look a lot more quality, I think, the old one. And the old one, again, has got quite a bit more painting done, as you can see on the valves. It's a little bit more detailed, and it just looks a little bit more polished. But having said that, the railroad version is just that, a railroad version. And they're not supposed to have too much detail on them, you know, to keep them affordable, so that isn't too bad. Uh, so anyway, yep, yeah, there's the Hornby version, and she's going to be pulling three coaches, two passenger coaches there. And on the back there, I've added the night mail car, um, just for a bit of extra interest. But for now, let's get the Railroad Midland compound moving. Let's try a slow performance test. And this Loco's got some real good weight to her. She really does weigh quite a bit. But having said that, she's still got a traction tyre on there, which is a shame. But I suppose it does mean she can pull a little bit more. So let's see how she runs, slowly to start with. And as you can see, what a brilliant, quiet and smooth motor is in there. Far more smooth than the 2P. There we go. I'm just debating whether that's true or not. It's probably about as smooth as the 2P. Um, not massively smooth at slow speeds, but certainly a lot quieter. Right, let's couple up to the coaches then and see how she does. There she goes. And hopefully she's just about in shot there. Let's move her back a little bit more so you can have one last look at her. There she is anyway, there's the front. <laughs> right, let's get her running then. Here we go. At a decent express train speed. And we'll start the older tender driven one as well. And for a Ringfield motor, she really isn't bad at all, actually. She does run quite nicely. So enjoy these two then while they run around the layout.
And as you can see, she's a good smooth runner. And she's able to pull quite a bit with that traction tyre, of course. Alright, so while they're both running around happily, I thought I'd share with you my score for this particular loco. Uh, in terms of detail, it really isn't too bad, uh, but as you saw in comparison to the older version, um, this railroad version uh, has had a bit of a downgrade in terms of detail, which is a shame because if they had painted the outlines of the windows and, you know, and added a little bit more detail here and there, it would have been a, a gorgeous locomotive, but it's a railroad range loco, so it's not going to have massive detail, so a quite a high detail score anyway, um, but performance, 9 out of 10. Now this is very very close to being a perfect performer, just add a little bit more weight, lose the traction tyre and you've got yourself a perfect runner there because the motor in that loco is absolutely brilliant. Character, 9 out of 10, again she's absolutely beautiful, I love the loco, it's absolutely gorgeous and it just does look like the photographs, honestly it does. Build quality again is very good, nothing's broken off, it seems pretty robust, 9 out of 10, can't fault it. Overall 8 out of 10, that's close to going up to 9. Uh, but the detail does weigh quite heavily here. But altogether, a very, very nice locomotive. Highly recommended if you can get yourself one. And uh, a really beautiful model. So enjoy these two while they run for a little bit longer. Struggling a little bit up that incline. Um, because that brake coach has got very plasticky wheels and it does cause a little bit of drag. Well everybody, that's just about all I've got to show you today, so I really hope you enjoyed seeing the Midland Compound Loco. If you liked her and the video, please don't hesitate to give the video a thumbs up, or even a comment, because I love to hear from you, as you know. Or you can visit the Facebook and Twitter pages at facebook.com forward slash samstrains and twitter.com forward slash samstrains. But for now everybody, thank you very very much for watching, and a massive thank you to you all um, who've subscribed, um, because thousand subscribers to me is an awful lot and I've got you guys to thank for that so thank you very much for that and I'll see you all very soon. Cheers everybody!